So, uh, what does dampening do for us? Um, dampening does a couple things for us. One of the things when you listen to people talk about dampening, they say, well, it makes us sound more like a piano. And I think that a lot of people don't understand, well, what, how does, what do you mean by that? And what it, what it means is that we can actually control where we can play some things, play a chord, and then rather than with no dampening, we can play a little bit more like a pianist where we can play a chord and then control the length of other notes. So that's one thing. The other thing it does for us is it makes it more expressive. And one of the people who talks the best about this is Gary Burton, um, one of our modern kind of stars on the instrument. And he talks about um, the expressivity of the vibraphone and how dampening and pedaling can really make a difference for it. So I thought I'd break down different kinds of dampening. Um, and we're going to talk about hand dampening and pedal dampening. And maybe we'll get one of these guys to come and play for us and so we can play a little bit uh, with that. So there's a couple of different ways. I'd like to kind of break down the, ham uh, the hand dampening and tell you about five different ways to hand dampen. And again, these are all available on the PDF. The first way is that one hand plays and the other hand damps. That's a pretty common concept. So it, just with one hand at a time, if I play one note and then the minute I play the next note, the other hand would dampen. And you can come down. So if you're playing with your right, you can damp with your left. Now most people know that. Let's talk about some specifics about it. One of the things um, when I'm working with students, they say, okay, but what about dampening? I mean, how do you get it so it's silent? How do you get it so the pressure's right? I mean, there's a couple different theories. One of the things you want to take a look at is the moment when you are dampening. And obviously it needs to be right at the same time. It can't be before or after, but the pressure that you put on the mallet can adjust. What I tend to think of is that I touch the mallet exactly at the moment when it makes contact, but then right after it, I press a little more so that it actually does the dampening. So, so I make contact and then push down. So one of the things if you're working on a piece and you want to think, oh, I'm not really getting the hand dampening or the mallet dampening to kind of be the way I want it, Take a look at how the amount of pressure, what the amount of pressure that you're doing when you make when you make contact and then after. If you just touch it, it still will damp, but it's maybe not quite as immediate, which can also be effective in certain situations. But generally speaking, with this, you want to touch it and then push a little bit more into it afterwards. Um, the other thing about hand dampening or mallet dampening in this way that I'd like to talk about is the angle. Uh, a lot of mallets, vibraphone mallets particularly, are mushroom shaped and some people go, why are they mushroom shaped as opposed to ball shaped? One reason is, is kind of to help with dampening. So you've got this kind of angle at it and you can sort of push down into it a little more. So another thing to look at in your own dampening and your exercises is what angle are you at? I tend to be at a pretty sharp angle. And a lower angle will also work. It's just a slightly different quality of sound. One thing that you'll notice is that the lower the angle, the more likely you are to get bounce and buzz. So you can probably see from overhead. But there's a little bit of a bounce that happens. So for me, I tend to think of a little sharper angle. And then the third thing about this is some people talk about a little bit of a slide when they're dampening and you can kind of slide forward a little bit along the grain of the metal. That can also get a cleaner, help get a cleaner damp. So you can play right. And then um, damp left or vice versa, play left. And, and damp with your right. So let's take a look at a couple of exercises. I, I found some for you. These are very, very basic and I would encourage you to come up with some on your own. But if we have that first uh, two mallet scale dampening, you should really with all of your scales, and then come back down. Now 
that same thing can be done with any combination of the four mallets. So on the second one, you see some mallet combinations, the second exercise. And again, this is um, something that you can, you can write down and just, or just remember to do. You can do mallets two to three, or you can do one to four. Any scale. Uh, or you can do one and three. Um, but really you can do any of them. So that's basic kind of hand dampening where one hand is playing and the other hand is dampening. Do with two mallets, with four mallets. You can work on your scales. I have one more exercise that I'd like to show you with regard to this, and this is this uh, third dampening exercise, which is kind of an interesting one. You play a scale all the way up, and then you just dampen it down. Kind of a nice, interesting exercise to do as well. And you can do that in any key. It's a good way to kind of practice how noisy yours are dampening and how clean are you dampening. You can hear the scale uh, come in and out at will. Yes? I have a question. Yes? Uh, how do you, because uh, when I um, dampen with my mallets, sometimes I get that buzz sound yeah. um, before when I go, especially from like the naturals to chromatics or whatever. Um, how do you get rid of that buzz when, from being audible? Yeah, th that's a great question. Um, there's a couple ways to do it. One of the things that I, I like to do is that kind of sliding and working in the grain. You, vibraphone's kind of an interesting instrument. You know, it's, it's, it's so grainy that it has those, the kind of the lines in it. And if you can kind of, I, I almost try to feel the threads in the mallet actually sort of working and settling into the grains, into the bar. So that's one way to do it. The, the other thing about when you're getting that buzz or that bounce is that there's a, there's a disconnect between how hard you're pushing at the time and how much the, the bar is vibrating. So if you can catch it and, and sort of get it fast right at the moment when it's happening, so a few things you can adjust. The slide forward, the speed of which you're picking up the sound waves, you know, because really if you think about the vibraphone, it's the bars are bouncing. That's how they're making sound, right? Just like any membrane. So if you can catch it at a, a point in it where you can catch right in that, that, that dip and, and grab it, that's another way to do it too. Angle also makes a big difference. So if you find that you're getting a lot of buzz in a certain way, you can get, you can try a different angle um, with the mallet. So those would be the three things. Yes, Joe. I was also going to say, um, like the people that we watch later that play four mallets, all of them play much higher, especially Gary Burton. Like his, his, like the way he holds his mallets are totally up. That's exactly right. And and you know that you see a lot of that. And so that's that angle. I tend to play more like a you know traditional percussion but I def as I was saying I like to use that angle to damp up it's really definitely I feel like it helps quite a bit cuz this is going to be the the part of the mallet where you have the most thread so it's going to get the most rebound it's going to get the most bounce so if you get a little bit more on top of it you're going to be a little more in contact with the center of the mallet so you can kind of get onto it that way so those would be a few of the things that I would try for that so that's that hand-to-hand -hand dampening. There are a bunch of different other ways to kind of hand damp. Um, another, the, another way to do it is that where one hand plays and the same hand damps. Some of this is a little obvious, right? So you can damp this way, um, or you can damp uh, where you play. So the hand that plays is the hand that damps. And I like to, when I'm, when I'm teaching this with people one-on-one, -on -one, I, I always uh, sort of emphasize this motion so that you're playing on the center of the ball and then, and then you're dampening more on the top of it. So for me, that really helps. Um, I have a little bit of a uh, piece that I can show you, an example of this, and Joe can put it up. This is from um, one of the greatest books, and I think we have a picture of this book, if you, if you can't see it there, but this is the, the Dave Friedman book, I think is one of the most excellent uh, method books that you can use. And just the first four um, in that right off the bat can really teach you so much about this. So 
this etude is, is uh, the Friedman etude number one. And it gives you, I'm going to do it with four mallets. I mean, you can do it with two mallets or four mallets. Um, it shows you a lot of that uh, different thing. In fact, maybe I'll do it with two so you can see those different things. So you'll see both in this one. You'll see this hand-to-hand -hand dampening that I was talking about. It goes fast. I'll do it slow first for you. faster? Let's see how I do.